So we bowl off today's show with cricket. The 2024 ICC Men's T20 World Cup is fast approaching. With only 59 days remaining until the ninth staging of the competition, bowling off in Texas, USA. Joining us in studio with a coveted trophy to discuss tournament preparations. ICC Men's T20 Media Manager, Philip Spooner, and Head Coach of the West Indies Red Bull Team, Andre Kohli. But of course, you know that T20 cricket is white ball, but Kohli was on the coaching staff for the 2016 team that won in India. And uh, that makes him pertinent to this discussion. <laughs> Kohli, welcome. Welcome to the Sports My Zone. Thanks, Lance. Great, great Thanks to have you live in the studio. Usually when we talk to you, it's by some Zoom connection or something, but it's yes. great to have you right here. Good to be back home and in studio. Yeah. And of course, Spooner was the media manager of that 2016 yeah. successful T20 experience as we get ready for another T20 experience, this time in the Caribbean and the USA. Let me start with you, though, Andre. Eight years ago today, <laughs> the women won the T20 World Cup, and then some hours later, the men did the same. Um, Carlos Brathwaite's indelible memories <laughs> presented to us. Um, what's your recollection of that, of that evening in India? Uh, <laughs> I remember uh, in Calcutta, um, ground is a very small ground. It was, it was packed. Um, you could hardly hear spoons. You could remember we were sitting maybe a little bit closer than how you and I are sitting now. And we, we, we couldn't actually hear each other wow. from this distance. We had to be in each other's ear. Um, and then, yeah, you know it is, when, it, when, it, when it's coming to a milestone, um, I, I don't know if it's the same in other sports, but in cricket, yeah, if you're sitting somewhere, you have to stay, you can't get up. Um, and then in that over, you know, in that over, just a thing, again, listen, you, you know, you can't mash up the vibes and, and the flow. Okay. Um, and everybody was just glued to the seats and so on, you know, it's, it was fantastic. Mm. You know, um, Spooner, I remember talking to a Barbados coach some years ago when Carlos Brathwaite started to be pushed ahead of Kevin Stout as the Barbados top all-rounder. And there were people in Barbados who felt Kevin Stout was unfair because of his steadiness and how good he had been domestically. But the coach told me that there was something special about Carlos Brathwaite and, and we would see it at some point. Now, his career didn't go the way that, you know, everyone would have hoped. But that, that, that was a very special performance by him, wasn't it? I, I'll take you back, Lance, to the camp in Dubai. Yes. <laughs> Before we even got to India. And I remember Darren Samri telling the team, he told everybody, he said to all the players, everybody be ready because your time might come. Yeah. And that meant from Ashley Nurse, who didn't play a game, to the captain himself, Darren Samri said, everybody, please be ready because in, this, in these World Cups, your time might come. And Sammy was speaking from experience because he won it in 2012. That's right. And as fate would have it, you know, Carlos steadily, steadily growing, going through the, you know, going through the system, coming through, playing matches, contributing here, contributing there. And then, well, we can see it right now, the last hurrah, really. Um, you know, it was unbelievable. I was sitting next to Sir Curtly, and Sir Curtly said to me, he said to me, and he said, for us to win, the first one got to go for six. The first one. He said, if the first one goes for six, this is doable. Yes. And Carlos slapped, and it went for six. And then, you know, well, that happened. And look, 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 Andrew, <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was purely spontaneous. You, you couldn't control yourself. You didn't know what was going, what, what you were going through. It was just the most amazing thing you've ever seen in a sport. Not for me, not just in cricket. Yeah. Yeah. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in any sport. And you've seen a lot. I, I, yeah, I, so, I mean, ball running nine point to win the Olympic gold medal is top tier. Yes. And, um, you know, but seeing a man hit four sixes to not only win a final, to win a big final in front of a billion people watching, I mean, like, that's top tier. Yeah. Um, I mean. Coach Coley, you're not a part of the white ball coaching staff at the moment, but looking on and from the position that you're in, we look at the roster and we see match winners in this West Indies team. How confident are you that Darren Sam is coaching and uh, this highly talented group can pull things off in, in June? Yeah, we're, we're all very positive about it. Uh, you mentioned the, the experience within the squad. Um, that, that, that lineup is yet to be agreed on, but I doubt that it will change much. Uh, from what we have had. Uh, and if you think about the passion that, that, that Darren normally takes to anything, as a captain, as a player, you saw that in the clip earlier. Um, and he's brought a similar kind of approach as coach. 
so we're, we're very, very optimistic and, and very confident about our chances. We're welcome. Yeah, and this one is for you, Spoon. I know the build up to this World Cup is going to be very, very special. It has already started out special. What you all did in New York was beautiful, <laughs> especially with Chris Gale and Ali Khan, you know, um, just being a part of the celebrations. You are very much involved. It looks like a lot of work. And maybe you can share with us just a teaser, because I know you and you may not want to tell us everything. But what are we to expect if that was just the opening? What's in store for us? Well, for, first, let me go back and congratulate the girls as well. 2016 was also the girls with Stefani and Haley and Deandra and Anissa. Anissa. And the Night Twins. And the under 19. And the under 19 boys Before who that. did it on Valentine's Day. Yeah. So with Hetmeyer, we, we, like we, we had Mark at the top and Alzari yeah. and Kimo Paul. So let's celebrate that too because that was magic. We were actually on the bus coming to the ground and the way Bravo shout out when the when the final run was hit, it was like if he had a, he had won the match. Sure. You know, Bravo is life of the party, no, no stopping him when he's championing the show. So we also gotta remember the girls did it and the on the nineteenth did it. In terms of twenty twenty four ICC men's T twenty World Cup coming to USA and and the West Indies, it was magical to see Chris Gale light up the Empire State Building. I mean, he's a champion. Everywhere Chris goes, people follow. He's a magnet with people. And people just, you know, gravitate towards him, larger than life figure. And to see a West Indian, one of our people, one of our champions, being given this amazing honor to pull this lever and watch the tallest building in, I think the tallest building in America just light up. It was, it, you know, it was surreal and there we go. And, he, Chris doesn't miss a beat. Chris just goes on and on and on, and that was a, a, absolutely. But well, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> that was an absolutely amazing, <laughs> amazing experience. And Ali Khan, yes. not far behind. He's the you know the hero of USA cricket, the the face of USA cricket. And this is such a wonderful partnership for us to have our champion, you know, lighting up a building in in the US. This is the synergies that we want to see, and uh, we, we all know cricket in the US is poised to take off. It's going to be massive. It's going to be, as they say, out of this world. And uh, we can't wait to see it start because, they, as you said, Maria, a lot of work has gone into it. There are a lot of passionate people on the project. And uh, we just want this to be a celebration of cricket in the West Indies and in the USA. And we want to also champion the people that are also working on it. For Waj Bash, our tournament director, he said that when the tournament finishes, he, want the whole, he wants the whole world to say the only place where T20 cricket should be played is in the West Indies. The West Indies must be the home, the place, the, the heartbeat of world cricket once again. Yeah, and the importance of this out of world tour, because one, for, of course, for the legacy, when we look back, right? Mm -hmm. But what about to build the excitement in West Indian fans? Because yeah. for quite some time, I mean, I always tease Lance because I'm of the generation where I never get to see the winning West Indies, <laughs> right? So I'm like, you know, I can't wait for that time where later on when I talk, I'll be able to say, well, you know, I lived through some winning times. How important is it that you get the fans to believe and, you know, get them to rally? Well, I grew up in the era of Greenwich and Haynes and Marshall and Gianna uh, and Richards, you. Richards, Richardson, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Paul Day Roberts. <laughs> so, I didn't know what was losing. Well, I mean, a draw used to feel like a loss. Last time, oh, and Andre could tell you that when the best in this draw test, but they said, but we lost the match. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, beating England 5-0 in 84, then beating them 5-0 in 86 was expected. But um, we, when, I, when I was part of the team that, that um, wrote the bid for this World Cup that yeah. was sent to ICT, one of the pillars upon which we, 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 we approached it was with the re-energizing of cricket fans and, and following in the West Indies. We want to ensure that fans get excited again and want to be part of cricket again and cricket becomes the number one thing. I know this is the Olympic year, this is the Copa America year, this is the Euro year. Yeah. This is every, everything is happening this year. But cricket is sitting right alongside everybody and it's literally um, a dominant attention um, grabber yes. in, in the whole scheme of things. And uh, we believe that um, this tournament will reignite the passion for cricket in the Caribbean. They already sold out Pakistan and India in, in half an hour, 34,000 seats. You know, that's crazy. And then a final with West Indies and India on the 29th of June in Barbados would be out of this oh, world. He has and, it uh, planned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you heard Mariah saying at the top that June is her birth month, so yeah. she would like a, a birthday present from the West Indies team. 
Well, in, Rob, we, 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 by we, way of a trophy. We get Rob on a speed dial and tell him, sorry, though. No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but she likes Rob on power. She thinks he's a, a solid all round and a good leader of the West Indies team as, yeah, as well. Um, Coach Coley, when we look at the quality of T20 cricket at the moment, and the IPL is a good advert for the quality of T20 cricketers, um, I've said on this show a few times that I think as far as how prolific they are in producing match winners, India is very, very irresistible at the moment in the quality of players that they are producing. And I've likened them to the West Indies from the 70s and the 80s, um, only from the standpoint of the proliferation of talent, because there's no team that has been dominant as the West Indies were. But from the standpoint that India can almost pick a second 11 team now and be competitive globally in the way that the West Indies were in the 70s, that's where the comparison ends because the West Indies under Lloyd and, and Richards were unbeatable. unbeatable. Mm -hmm. And, and India isn't unbeatable. So let me just put that, put that, put that there. The Aussies have strong um, tournament um, competitors, very hard-nosed cricketers and so on. Who do you think are favourites to win the World Cup? I know we want the West Indies <laughs> to win, but if you look at the quality and the rosters, which I haven't been finalised yet, but we pretty much know who may play, aren't India favourites? Uh, they would have to be because yes. of their dominance in this format of the game. Obviously, we are playing at home, so we'll also be strong favourites. I think what would be the decider uh, in the tournament is uh, the, the state of the pitches. Yes. Um, you know, if they spin too much, then, uh, you know, it could be an issue for, for, for teams who, you know, like the ball coming on. Um, but, you know, but I'm, I'm sure that um, the ICC will ensure that the pitches are good quality. Um, and then, you no, know, it becomes more of an even playing field. Um, towards the back end, you now is where you'll actually um, know who is who. But when the pitches start to deteriorate a little bit more and then, you know, your skills need to be brought to, 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 the, to, fo to the fore, etc. So, but I would say, yeah, India, West Indies. Yeah. Um, but in that, in, not in that order, though. We're seeing this. We're seeing this. <laughs> one, seeing number this. one. You, you just mentioned pitch conditions because Spoons, we had a curator yeah. workshop yeah, uh, we a couple of weeks ago, uh, which is geared towards, you know, preparation and world-class preparation of these mm -hmm. pitches. What would have come out of that workshop? <coughs> that was outstanding. Um, that was led by Roland Holder, yes. who himself is a former Barbados captain and West Indies cricketer. And um, along with Kent Crafton, from St. Lucia? From St. Lucia, yeah. And Travis um, Ferris um, out of, out of um, at CCG in Antigua. And they went around these six host nations just speaking to and educating all of the curators and groundsmen and women on the uh, ne what's necessary for the Cricket World Cup. Um, that's upcoming, T20 Cricket World Cup that's upcoming. And, um, and then there was a document, curator's document, that was put together by Roland and his team on, on um, what's required for the World Cup. But it's also beyond the World Cup, and we're looking now at, again, re-energizing re and um, preparing the generation of ground staff that we have and the, and the next generation be, behind them as to what ideal cricket pitches and, and conditions should look like. So that was a blessing, really, for, for all these ladies and gentlemen across the Caribbean. There were over 100 participants, and um, that's the, the sort of the definitive document as to what pitches and outfields should look like and should not only for the World Cup, but also beyond the World Cup, because we got to set a standard, we got to maintain a standard, and we got to increase uh, on, on that standard and the quality of everything that we do. So uh, Roland, kudos to Roland and his team, Travis and Kent, for doing a fantastic job. And everybody, everybody who participated said they learned so much. And one of those persons was Winston Reed, the okay. former Barbados um, cricketer who- Left arm spinner. Left arm spinner, who's the head of grounds, um, head career at Kens and Noble right now. And uh, he was, he was like, you said, man, they should have sent this to me 15 years ago. I would have, <laughs> I would have been way, way higher now in my, in my level of skill and stuff. But it was, it was a brilliant, a brilliant um, initiative. Yeah, you've said on the show before when we had linked with you a few months ago, previewing the World Cup, that T20 cricket now is not what it was five or six years ago. And mm. you said that to say that this T20 World Cup, without question, will be the best and biggest T20 World Cup in history. Can you, you know, elaborate it's, on that? Point it's the of? biggest from the point of view of um, number of teams, 20 teams. There's never been a uh, ICC event with 20 teams before. Um, uh, 20 teams, 55 matches spread over a month. Um, venues in the Caribbean and the U.S., so it's, it's going across borders. 
Um, to have 20 teams, um, that goes to show the sport is growing, spreading. You've got Uganda, you've got Namibia, you've got Nepal, you've got um, Ireland, you've got Holland, yeah. and um, then you've got the big guns, India, Pakistan, West Indies, Australia, New Zealand, um, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. So you've got everybody. You literally, you've got USA and Canada. Yeah. You literally got everybody across the world. This is now a proper world event. And um, you've got fans from everywhere wanting to be part of it. I mean, everybody just wants a ticket. And um, the pre there's some premium tickets, and we know that we won't get too deep into that. Um, there's some premium tickets which people are willing to pay a good, good top dollar for. But in addition to that, you've got a global audience of a billion, yeah. which is like Super Bowl. I mean, we're talking Super Bowl numbers here in terms of cricket. And um, a billion people watching on TV is mind blowing. It's really, really out of this world. Yeah. I mean, if you were to tell anybody in Barbados that an event in Barbados is going to have an audience of a billion people, they'd say, well, what the hell is that? Yeah. You know? Uh, so, so cricket is really grown. And we are really honored. And uh, it's a privilege, really, to be hosting an event of this nature in our, on our shores. And, um, you know, it's, a t it's, a, it's, it's, it's also the level of confidence that the ICC is putting Cricket West Indies that they're able to manage a project of this magnitude. And um, you know, everybody, people from across the Caribbean working, crossing borders to, to work, people from all over the world coming to the Caribbean to work and stuff like that, sharing knowledge and um, you know, I'm putting it out there. And then in a couple of years, there's CONCACAF co-hosting the Football World Cup through FIFA. So it, it's, it's happening. And then there's cricket in the World Cup in 20, sorry, at the Olympics in 2028. Hopefully one of our teams in the Caribbean can make it. You know, so it's all happening. Cricket is really growing. And uh, it's when people say cricket is the second, biggest sport in the world, people think, oh, well, that can't be true, but one, sure. game, has numbers, a, show it. one yeah. game has an audience of a billion. Show me another sport that has that. Yeah, it's really, really growing. And, you know, as we get ready to wrap this segment, Spoons, I know the trophy is here in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and it has a couple other countries to go to. So where are you off to next? And what's <laughs> happening in Jamaica? That, that's so important because is it that you're just bringing the trophy to Jamaica? What, what's happening? Is there a party? Well, it's carnival in Jamaica, actually. I, well, so will you beans. be on the streets? Spilling, no, when, beans, they told me, when they told me that... Um, it's Sunday. That the, when they told me that the trophy is going to be going to Jamaica, I said, OK, um, that's great. And then somebody said, it's carnival in Jamaica. I said, oh, so the trophy is going to carnival in Jamaica. Well, that's what I want to know. So you'll be on the road with the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> if you know Spoons, the trophy will no, be on the road. No, I'm not too no. so sure I'll be on the road with the trophy. No, but um, Jamaica is one of the pillars of West Indies cricket and world cricket. Jamaica has produced some of the greatest cricketers I've ever lived. Um, George Headley is probably arguably the best West Indies batsman we've ever had, arguably. Um, I don't, you don't compare eras, so you just said George Headley was a great yes. West Indies batsman. You had Courtney Walsh, you had Michael Holden, you've had Lawrence Rowe. Jeffrey Dujon, Jimmy Adams, Chris Gale, we have always, um, you know, we had a lot of great Jamaican cricketers that have done extremely well for West Indies and proud West Indies, even the West Indies teams that won the, the World Cups in 75, 79, 20, 2004 Champions Trophy and the World Cup T20. Jamaicans in every single Martin team. Samuels was Martin, Martin, Martin Samuels, Martin Samuels, yeah. World Cup trans, yeah. yeah. So you can't have a trophy tour and not come to Jamaica. And that's one of the things that we decided that we would do, even though Jamaica is not hosting matches, we decided that we would honor the legacy of cricket in Jamaica. And we were at um, Bob Marley Museum, you know, the iconic player, Bob Marley, is the top tier, greatest musician of all time. And we took it to Bob Marley Museum. They were absolutely delighted to have it there. And we had a good interaction with some cricket fans. They, cricket, they seem to be cricket mm -hmm. fans everywhere in the world. Yeah. Because you put, down, you, 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 put, you put down anything cricket and you, people gravitate towards it. So some fans had a fantastic time at the Marley Museum. And tomorrow we are at Devon House. Oh my, that's close to me. Oh, okay, nice. You should come along. Yeah. We're hosting a, a small event with the Jamaican girls that won the double in yeah. the Cricket West Indies um, T20 Blast and 50 over um, Super 50. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a big, massive activation where we have it in a big mall and 20,000 people pass through and take pictures. We appreciate um, that it's not that, but we also want to honor the legacy of Jamaican cricket and ensure that the T20 World Cup trophy comes to Jamaica. And one of the stops is clearly. Um, in the Sports Mark studio, and Thank that goes you. to show the level of respect that we also have for Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Spooner. We, have, we, really, we yeah. appreciate that. When Thanks, I, Chris Gale. He made it, he made it mandatory that, um, yeah. that, it, that it passed through. Okay. Wow. Um, before we wrap the segment, I know this is T20 World Cup discussion, but, uh, and the T20 World Cup is the biggest thing happening in cricket for 2024, but Coach Coley, you have a test team that you are 
preparing, not allowed to test action in 2024. Unfortunate that the number of test assignments for the West Indies is not that great these days. But um, how are you looking forward to your next assignment with your boys? Yeah, we're look, definitely looking forward to that. I mean, the biggest chunk of our uh, test championship actually is in 2024. So we have five test matches in the summer, three in England and uh, two against South Africa in the West Indies. Uh, so that's very significant for us um, because, because of where we are on the table. Um, sixth. Sixth. Yeah. No, sixth 33.3%. Um, <laughs> point, point rating. <laughs> yeah, man. Yes. Um, so it, it's very important for us um, this summer. So we're definitely looking forward to that. I mean, at the end of the, the first class season, we're putting our squads together. Uh, we're also hosting South Africa in an 18 uh, series. Uh, so, so all of that um, is centered around preparing for the Red Ball. And then towards the back end of the year, we have Bangladesh for a couple of test matches. So, so quite a few uh, test matches um, available to us this year. So yeah. it's very important for us. Yeah. And Coach Coley, I know that they are mostly white ball focused at the moment. But a lot of fans are asking about Brandon King and Shea Hope for, for, for the Red Ball game and white clothes. You're the, you're the coach. Your thoughts? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Serious bones to that. No, no but um, you know, we, have, we, have had, we have had conversations with, 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 with both Shea and, and, and Brandon, and they're very keen to play a red ball. Uh, the timing of some of these white ball tournaments have not necessarily aligned with when we have test cricket. Um, you know, so we're looking forward to over the next six to 12 months to continue those conversations and um, you know, coming up with alongside Desmond Haynes and Craig the best, the best team. Yes. Um, you know, we talk about T20 you now, we're we'll focusing on that, but if you think about the general pace of play in ODI, T20 test cricket um, has increased. Um, and, and quite a few players play across formats. Um, so definitely um, something to think about and, uh, you know, we're looking to re-energize our team yeah. as, as best we can. Okay, well, I, I just bowled Andre Coley a bouncer there. I must say that when I was 15 years old, I was a fast bowler. But I didn't get any faster, so by the time I was 19, I became medium pace. And then when I started playing as an adult, or continued playing as an adult, I pretty much stopped bowling because the pace at which I bowled was, was insignificant bowling to adults. But I'm happy that I could have bowled a bouncer there to coach Coley. Uh, gentlemen, great having you on the Sports Max Zone. A Thanks. really fabulous time here for cricket. Yeah. Great having the World Cup trophy in here. Let's hope that the West Indies will lift it on the 29th of June at Kensington Oval in Barbados. Thank you very much, gentlemen, Thank and you. Uh, have a, a great rest of your time in Jamaica. <laughs> well, Coley is Jamaican, so he <laughs> understands the place. Um, Spooner is a Barbadian, but he's been here many times. We'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.